Hey, what's going on everybody? Back with another how-to. Today, we're gonna to be replacing the water pump on this 2017 Jeep Grand Cherokee 3.6. Now, this should fall in line with any 3.6 fourth gen Grand Cherokee, which is 2011 to 2020, so let's get into it now. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and get into the water pump replacement. I'm going to show you why we're actually replacing the water pump. So if you can see down there, there is our water pump. And if you see all that orange, that is all residue from the pump leaking. It's leaking right out of the weep hole. And it's actually leaking so bad that when it's warmed up, it'll drip onto the pulley. And it's actually flinging the coolant onto this line here. You can see it on that line right there. And onto the air intake box. So it'll start flinging it when it gets warmed up and it's leaking pretty bad um this has got about seventy-five thousand miles on it i've been servicing this vehicle for about the past 20 to twenty-five thousand, and it was leaking since i first initially saw this vehicle but it's progressively gotten worse over the past uh couple oil changes and i think it was definitely time to go ahead and do this so um as you can see pretty orange down there leaking pretty bad so let's go ahead and get this thing off all right, so first thing we're going to do is drain the coolant and the antifreeze from the radiator. If you look down there, that red cap is the actual drain cap for this um, radiator. So we're going to go ahead and get to that, unscrew that, and then we'll be able to drain the coolant out of the system. Um, at least start to drain the coolant out of the system. And we can go ahead and let that drain while we start disassembling everything else. So if you see, there's that plastic splash guard down there. So we're gonna go ahead and come under the vehicle. All right. And if we look up here, this whole cover here is what we're gonna be taking out, okay? So we're gonna go ahead, get this cover off, and then we'll have access to drain the radiator. All right, so this plastic cover here is held in with some bolts. There is a 13 mil here, 13 mil on the other side, and it has some 10 mils lining, We've got one. It has a plastic clip right there. Uh, another 10 mil and then one more 10 mil so all right guys so for this plastic cover we got both of the rear 13s out we have the three 10 mils out we've got the push clip out as well so two 13 mils push clip and three 10 mils and then we have two more and this should free up so on each side here there is a 10 mil right there so there's one on this side and there is one on the other side that goes right into the side of our plastic pan splash guard thing here so 10 mil right there we're going to go ahead and fire both of those out here on the passenger side and on the driver and this thing should be freed up there it is on out all right guys so we got both of those side bolts out as you can see this is still pretty tight in here so if you look it slides into this plate right here on the subframe so i think what i'm going to do is fire the other two bolts out of this we have one here and one here on each side look to be two more 13s so let's drop those and then this whole plate can come down and we should be able to back this off all right so should be a 13 mil right here yep one one on the other side All right, just about out on this one. All right, we got both of those rear 13s out. Now I can just drop this back and slide it out. Slide it under the car along with our pan. And there we go, guys. Look, we have full access to the water pump right there to drain our radiator. Everything is right here. It makes it a lot easier access and a lot easier for cleaning up and stuff when we go to get our new water pump installed. So there we go, guys. Got our cover and that lower shield out. So let's go ahead and get this radiator drained. All right, so as you can see, we're underneath the car here. That is where we are draining our radiator. Now what I have is a steel pan on the ground so I have that to protect my garage floor it's a good thing to have just for extra spillage and anything that might overflow um, and then we have a 
coolant drain pan, all right? So nothing spectacular. We're gonna get these right underneath of the pet cock or drain plug, whatever you wanna call it, right there. Let's go ahead and get that thing out and start draining the coolant out of the system. All right, so this thing's probably gonna be on there a little bit tight. I just have some pliers here. I'm just gonna lightly turn it. Barely touched it, all right? Just wanted the teeth to grab on and start it off for me. All right, so you can see it's already dripping out. We're gonna start draining it. And you might get a little bit wet here, so I'm trying to keep my arm out of the way so I don't get wet but and not block the view, but there we go, guys. You can see our orange coolant coming out. All right. So I'm gonna spin this out, get that flow going. All right, I'm gonna let that run for a little bit. And then once we get a little bit less, we'll pull the whole petcock out, all right? So there we go, guys. All right, guys, so we've come to a slow drip here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out, make sure Nothing else is gonna come out, and you don't have to do that, but just wanted to make sure. Seems like we're good, so I'll go ahead and put that back in. Looks like we're about dripped out as much as we can. So we'll leave this here for now, the drain pan, and leave that as is. We'll let anything else drip out, and now we'll go ahead and get into the disassembly of everything we need in order to get to this water pump. So let's go ahead and get under the hood. All right, guys, so we are under the hood here. We are going to have to do some disassembly to get to the water pump. Nothing too crazy, so we're just going to start here, of course, with the engine cover. And if we pop this up, this pops right off. There is a T30 right there waiting for us. So grab a T30, put it on an impact. We're going to fire that out, and then we can go ahead and pull the cover all the way off. All right, guys, T30 on impact. Back that right on out. Put that gently right here. Get our T30 out, then we should be able to go ahead, just pull from a corner. It is kind of held in on these press tabs, so right there, see those rubber grommets, holds on to those, but should be able to pull it straight up and off, and now we got the engine cover off. All right guys, cover off, I just put the T30 right here back on the manifold so we don't misplace it or lose it. So now what we need to do is remove this intake plastic piping here. What we're gonna do is fire off the clamps here. I believe they are eight mils. So we're gonna get an eight mil on the impact, loosen those up, and then we're gonna start working this whole uh, intake box and assembly piping out. All right guys, eight mil on an impact. So just gonna lightly fire these back. One, come over here to the box side. Two, all right, we got both of our clamps loosened up. So now, we're gonna go ahead and loosen up this harness here. So there should be a red tab that you can pull back. Literally pull back on that, press it, and it should come right out. All right, so we got that released. As you can see, we got some play in our intake here now. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and work on getting this out. So, popped it off from the back. All right, there's just a rubber mount right here. You can pop that up. Should be one underneath it here that you can pop up. Now what I'm gonna do is back this off of the box and then we should be able to work the whole pipe up and out. So let me go ahead and put the camera down so you guys can see and we'll get this box out. All right guys, so I'm just right here. Just gonna pull this back. See so it's got the room for play here, all right? And then I'm pulling it up and out this way. Okay, now one thing I do see that we are gonna have to do here, just to fully relieve this, got it all freed up. All right, so you can see, we popped it off back there, got it pulled off, because I pulled it this way. The only thing left here is we just have this uh, zip-tied harness here on that clip. So I'm gonna grab a panel popper, we'll pop that out, and we should have this all freed and removed. All right guys, just have a panel popper here. If I can get this in here the best way that I can. And it's gonna be gentle. I'm sure it's gonna have some heat damage from being hot, cold, hot, cold a hundred times, but we got it out without breaking it. So there we go. Fully free. 
and this whole assembly should lift right out there we go all right guys so our air intake tubing is off our next move here is i'm going to remove this vacuum pump because it's blocking our view and access and everything to get to the water pump now this is a 17 i believe some of the earlier models are a little bit different i think the lines coming from the opposite side has a red clip instead of a green one just subtle differences but it's going to be relatively the same my goal is just to move this out of the way so what i'm going to do is it has this little clip here that opens up on this line i'm going to pull it off okay so i got that removed i'm going to unplug this harness and then I'm gonna remove the two bolts holding this into the mount, and I'm hoping I can just move this out of the way. So the line here is a little bit stiff and tight, but I think we might be able to get it out of the way without damaging anything, and we can leave everything connected and do the least amount possible to get the access we need. So we're gonna go ahead and get this harness off. All right, so to get this harness off here first, there is a couple push tabs holding it into the mount. All right, so you can literally just take a panel popper, press it, should pop it right off. All right, so now we have better access to this. And now you can press it in, just press it right there and it should free that up. All right, so the next move here is I'm going to approach the two bolts that are on this coming up from the bottom. I believe they are 10 mils. So we're gonna just take a 10 mil and I'm gonna fire these right out and hopefully that'll free up the whole uh, part off of the bracket and then we can just back this right up out of our way. All right guys, so I just have a 10 on my little impact here. All right, you see I got enough room to get in there. Back that out. There's one. Put that to the side. We grab this other one out here, and I'm going to hold it so it doesn't fall when I take this one out. All right, so out. I have the assembly here in my hands. I should be able to move this gently, gently out of the way. I'm just going to put it right up there. <laughs> All right, guys, so just carefully place it out of your way. You don't want a lot of tension on this line. In fact, I'm even going to free that up a bit here. This is could be a brittle line, potentially, depending on the miles. So I just have this resting right here. Doesn't seem to be moving. It's out of our way pretty much where the oil filter location is. So that's completely out of our way. And that opened up a lot more space for us to get in here and actually get the pump out. All right, so two 10 mils, got the AC part out, one harness right out, and now we got a pretty good access point for the pump and for the belt to get all this off. So let's go ahead and keep getting this thing apart. All right, guys, so if you can see, there is our serpentine belt. Now, it might be a good idea maybe to take a picture of this if you feel like you're gonna forget it just to have the routing down, but you can see here is the routing and i will be providing a routing diagram as well so regardless i will give you the belt routing in this video but there is our serpentine belt we're going to go ahead and remove it and we're going to do so by coming right here to this tensioner i'm going to grab a 3 8 drive breaker bar and we are going to relieve the tension on the tensioner and uh pull that belt right off all right guys so you can use a tool of choice you can use a breaker bar you could use a serpentine belt tool you can use a socket wrench i have a 3 8 drive extendable socket wrench i think i'm going to have just enough leverage and i can get in here with this little extension on this to make this easy and a little bit easier on myself for access and everything so if you can see i got it positioned pretty good and if i'm pulling it towards the passenger side so if you're facing it to the left you can see it's releasing the tension on that belt all right so bring it down here we'll leave that tension and then we should be able to start pulling this belt off sorry i hit the camera guys but just literally pulling it off all the pulleys go ahead and put this back down taking the tension off and there we go a little bit caught here between the crank and the tensioner but there it is guys full belt removed all right so no more belt just a 3 8 drive right there in our tensioner to relieve the pressure and we can go ahead and pull the belt right off all right guys belt off we have a few more things we got to get off and a couple more things obstructing us from getting the pump completely off and then we should be home free to take the pump off so if you look there is this line this coolant line here running to the thermostat housing so what we are going to do is 
go ahead and back off the 10 mil right here on this bracket. That's what's holding this line to the bracket. So it's got a 10 mil on a socket wrench. We're gonna go ahead and back this off. Should come out pretty easily. Just getting it out with my hand now. All right. So now we have some play in that coolant line, all right? But still not enough to really get into the water pump bolts that we need to. So what we're gonna do is, you can see our drain pan and our steel pan. I'm gonna move it over to here because we're gonna have to disconnect the two coolant lines right there going to the water pump. And I'm also gonna disconnect this cooling line here so we can pull it back and have the access we need to get to those bolts for the pump. So we're gonna get these off and then we'll go ahead and be able to move that whole aluminum line back to gain access to the bolts we need for the water pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that over and then we'll go ahead and get these clamps back and get that off. All right, so drain pan is underneath our lines that we're gonna be disconnecting. So I'm gonna take some big pliers here. Go ahead and move the clamp back here on this thicker one. Uh, I think I'm gonna need my other hand to get that, but I will put the camera down and I'll film myself getting both of these off and then we'll pull that back so you can see what we're doing here. All right, let me get this to go back here a bit. Yup, just need my other hand to push it back. Maybe break that loose right here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, back this side out. So pliers pressing down. Got that back. Let's go ahead and put our pliers around the rubber part here. Let's get this thing disconnected. All right, we got some movement there, so I think I should be able to pull it off without taking anything else off. Let's see. Yep. He is off. Didn't even have any uh, residual coolant or anything coming out. Might have that with this one. Let's see. Pliers on it again. We're just going to go ahead and try to get this thing, some of that rubber to break loose. Just want to give it a light turn gently with the pliers. All right. And then if you do that and pull on it a hair, it should start pulling that hose off. So I think I got it. Yep, there we go. All right, there we go. We're losing cooling now. <laughs> All right. See, she's spewing a bit. Trying to press it down a bit to get some of that out. So yes, you will lose coolant on this. Just be prepared. And that should allow us to at least put this down here. And as you see, I just bent it down. It's kind of resting up against the tensioner. And I got that line out of the way for us to now have pretty much full access to our water pump. So the last two things that need to come off of this water pump before we take the bolts out is the two hoses going to it. So we got the uh, lower radiator hose and then this coolant line here. So I'm going to go ahead, put the pliers on that. We'll back this one off and then we'll take the lower radiator hose off and then we should be able to go ahead and get into removing the bolts on this thing all right guys i'm hoping you can see on the angle i got you on i'm sure it's not the best but it's about the best i can get you for right now so got this clamp down all right same thing we did with the other hoses lightly take our pliers start rocking this hose back and forth hoping to break free that rubber up against that piping there remember you want to be really careful when you're doing this all right guys i think i got her moving enough there we should be able to pull her slide it right off and get antifreeze everywhere <laughs> all right i'm just turning this hose down i don't know if you can see it just turning it down to drain the coolant out of it all right so there's that and now we just have our big clamp here on the lower radiator hose. We'll get that one off and we should be home free to go ahead and pull that radiator hose off. So don't particularly like the angle this thing is on. It's gonna be a little harder to get to. I don't know if they all put them in the same angles, but hopefully yours is oriented a little bit better, but I got right to it with the pliers as you can see. Got it down. 
Let's go ahead and see if we can rock this hose off of here. All right, guys, let's switch to some different pliers here, if you can see them. It's got them pretty open. Just want to break this rubber free like we did the other hoses. It's not really easy to get an angle on it with the pipe coming out of the top of this thing, but I'm thinking if I get around it enough, I can get it to free up and we can slide it right on off of there. All right, guys, this thing's pretty much loose. It's a little bit stuck in the back here, and I think it's from all this rusted antifreeze from this thing leaking. Uh, it's got it almost rust welded on here. See, the front is free, but all this corrosion in the back is like gluing it on. Let's see if I can rock it a bit, break it up. I don't want to rip it, of course. There we go. All right, lower radiator hose officially off, guys. I'm gonna move this pain in the ass hose back out of the way. And there we go, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and let this drip out a little bit more and we'll go ahead and get the pump off. All right, so I hope you guys got a good view here. Pretty much all of our obstructions and everything holding this pump in place is now free, other than the bolts retaining it to the engine, of course. Uh, one more thing we're going to remove before we actually take the pump off is just take our idler pulley here off. All right, so we are going to remove that. That is a 13 mil. So we're going to go ahead and take a 13 mil, remove that, and we should be good to go ahead and start removing the bolts from the pump. All right, guys. Idler pulley right here, 13 mil. Go ahead and get on that guy. There you go. Freed up. Back this thing out. All right, just about out. There she is. All right, so that is one of the water pump bolts, this 13 mil here with the pulley. All right, so just note where that goes. It's right above the crank, so you know what's what. I'm going to put this pulley to the side with its bolt, and then we can go ahead and start removing all of the water pump bolts. All right, guys, our idler pulley is out right there. So as you can see, if we're looking around the body of this water pump here it has a lot of different size bolts that go into taking this thing off all right so we want to be careful and make sure that we get all of them in the correct spot when we take them out and put them back in so that way we don't have any bolts misplaced or in the wrong spot or anything like that when we go to reassemble so what i suggest to do is take your gasket here you're going to orientate it as if it's on the car so if we're looking at it, it's going to go like this. So I'm going to take it, put it down like that. That is the bottom bolt here. So if I'm looking at it like this, it's exactly what it's going to look like on the car. And each bolt I take out, I'm going to take it out one by one and put it into the corresponding hole in the gasket so I know where it went. And I want to show you guys what we're going to do once we have it off and how we're going to be able to get the bolts where they need to be. All right, guys. There is 12 bolts in total. We already have one out, which was the idler pulley bolt. So we have 11 left and there's three different sizes. These little ones that go around those right there. They are 10 mils. The two, one right here and one right here are 13s. And that big one right there is a 15. So we got 13, 15, 13, and then all the other ones look to be 10s. So we're going to go ahead back each one of these out individually put them in our gasket so we don't lose the positioning of each bolt's orientation and then we'll get the pump off all right guys i just have my 3h drive here with about a two inch extension and a 10 mil and i'm just going to go around and get all these 10 mils off so we're going to start breaking these guys loose all right so i'm starting with this side one here 10 mil directly next to the pulley and once you crack it loose, you'll probably be able to back it out by hand. You should be able to do. So there is our 10 mil. And if you can see, that's where it came out. And like I said, we're going to transfer this to our gasket. So I'm going to come right over to the gasket here. And it's going to be this one right here. So I'm going to put it up to the bottom. All right. So there it is. If you look next to the pulley that bolt it's right there and there's two below it two below it 
And that's our positioning on that actual bolt. All right, guys, I'm gonna bring you back in real quick. So we got all of the 10 mils out. So as you can see, these are all the 10 mils and there are different lengths. So like these are longer, that's shorter. So this is why you wanna map out what goes where. These actually have rubber grommets around them probably to prevent leaking. So definitely something you wanna keep in mind. So the only three bolts we have left holding this in is the 13, the 15, and the 13. We already got that one out. That is the 13 from the idler pulley. So just these top three in the corner and we can go ahead and get those out and then we should be good to go. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get my two 13s here off. So I'm on the first one. All right. So let's see if we can get this out by hand. Feels as though I can. There it is, 13 out. So I'm gonna get the other 13, the 15 out, and then our pump's free. All right, guys. So all bolts, all 12 surrounding this entire water pump are now free. It's probably still gonna be stuck a little bit to the block. So what we're gonna have to do is just try to pry this thing off without damaging anything. So what I'm gonna try first is just pulling it right here and see if we can get it to budge. And she is not budging. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna try the next thing, and that's a small pry bar. We're gonna see if we can pry it off. See if I can get under this, or maybe pull it back a hair. It's on here pretty good. So we wanna be extremely careful when doing this. There it is. So what I did is I took it and I pulled it forward. Try not to touch the thermostat housing. That is plastic. You don't want to pry from that. But you can hear this bad boy ripping off. And you can see it coming off. And we're actually not losing a crazy amount of coolant here. Gasket's halfway sealed to the block. Halfway sealed to the pump all right so got the pump free all right there is the pump i'll put this to the side and we just got to rip the rest of this gasket off carefully of course all right guys so as you can see we got the gasket off you can see where all our leaking was happening you can see it right there like i said spraying when the pulley is moving when it's at operating temperature but there we go gasket off all right and we'll come over here to the pump and the gasket. So here is our old pump. As you can see, she was leaking really bad. All right. And here is all of our bolts. Now, the easy way to do this is if you're using your gasket, you can take each one of these bolts out and transfer it to the old pump. All right. So this is how you don't lose place on what's what. All right, a little hard to do one handed here, but you get the idea. All right, so you're going to transfer all of your bolts from your gasket to the pump. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish that up here myself. And when I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a new pump gasket and everything we got to go ahead and get this job done. So let me go ahead and get these bolts migrated from the gasket over to the old pump. All right, guys, so I got all of the bolts from the gasket transferred right over to the old water pump so I know what is what. And what you're looking at here is old versus new. Okay, so here is our new water pump. I went with a Gates water pump. So there it is, Gates part number is 44039. That is a Gates pump. I like Gates. I think they have good cooling system products. They have radiator hoses, thermostats, water pumps. They have good belts. Overall, I've had really good experiences with Gates, and I've used their water pumps on numerous other applications and have had no problems with them. So that's why I went with the Gates pump, especially consider this OEM one failed pretty early, in my opinion. Um, and I did go with the Mopar gasket. So this is the Mopar OEM gasket. Part number is 6821. 410 9AB. Okay, 
that is the part number right there for the Mopar uh, OEM gasket. Now the Gates pump does come with a gasket and it's actually pretty nice. I just went with the OEM to be extra in particular to make sure it was gonna be great fit. But honestly, if you buy the Gates pump that comes with this specific gasket right here, I honestly don't see you having any problems with it. It looks pretty good. In fact, I'll even go an extra mile here and I'll put the OEM up to the gates and it's identical guys so there you go probably could have got away with just using the gates uh pump gasket but i did go with the mopar so your choice of course to either use the gates that comes with it if you go gates or just get the oem gasket so here is our new parts guys let's go ahead and get these things installed now, before we do the install, one thing we do have to address is cleaning up the mess here. So I'm going to clean up all this residual uh, muck and mess. Look at that. It's pretty gross, guys. So I'm going to wipe that up. We're going to clean the mating surface as well. I'm not going to get too crazy in recording it and show you guys every step, but I will give you insight as to how I'm approaching it and what I'm doing. So I'm going to grab a couple paper towels and I'm going to go ahead and go at this. All right, guys. So as I'm sure you can see, it's pretty messy down here. We got antifreeze everywhere all this corrosion from it leaking over a decent amount of time so i'm just going to start by getting some of this up wiping it down then we'll clean the maintenance surface and then we'll finish the cleanup and then we can go ahead and get back into putting the new pump on all right guys so i got some of that cleaned up in there so what i want to do now is clean the mating surface so what i want to do is take a little bit of brake cleaner spray it on some red scotch brake and i'm just going to lightly sand that surface with the scotch brake and it should clean up all the oxidation and leftover residue from the original gasket all right so go ahead and get a little bit of brake cleaner on this we'll just lightly go around this edge and we should be able to clean this up pretty nice for the new gasket all right guys so we got this all cleaned up in here so you can see our mating surface is pretty clean worked off just about everything There'll be still a little bit of oxidation stuff left but it's almost impossible to get everything but it's pretty clean and it should be more than enough that we need to get this back on with a nice clean seal so our mating surface is all cleaned up everything's ready to go one thing i will note um i'm not going to be doing a flush or any type of you know cooling system flush anything like that i'm simply going to be refilling the system after we're done one thing you can do if you would like, you can flush out the overflow. I would suggest doing it now while everything's apart. What you could do is dump a gallon of distilled water into the overflow. And if you follow the lines, it's just going to go right to the lower radiator hose. And then you can come down here and dump it all out. So, you know, you can really just dump a gallon into the overflow, flush all this out. And then you can let the water run right out down here from the lower radiator hose, just like that and then you can get all that out of the system so just something to note if you want to do a flush you can do that that's a little minor flush whatever you want to consider that's just something you could do to get the overflow flushed out all right so we're all cleaned up here we're ready to go i'm gonna go ahead and grab our pump and the gasket and we're gonna go ahead and get this thing back installed several months later all right guys i'm actually bringing you in a few months later i made this video and then i found out this thing was leaking so if you look at this gates pump it was leaking from the weep hole. was not leaking from the gasket. Everything was good as far as the gasket was concerned. I did this whole job, and then I did an oil change on this a few months later, and I found that this was leaking right from the weep hole. So it's the exact same issue as the original one. So both the gates and the original had weep hole issues, leaking right from the weep hole. So you can see where it was trickling down. You can see it all in the pulley. So. It's kind of a good thing I didn't upload this video yet because I can give you some more real world insight as to what happened with this Gates pump. And, you know, just I did this job once and I'm doing it again because this Gates pump failed. So I actually got one from Advanced this time. And if you look, it's got OEM Chrysler badging and part number on it, just like the original. The pulley is identical. As you see, the Gates has Gates branded. Um, pulley and all that so i left the gate stuff prior to this just so you can see you know what it looked like when i first did the job and you saw all the parts and you saw i used this gates pump and usually i've never had problems with gates but this one definitely failed on me so just something to note doesn't mean all gates pumps are going to fail but just something to note it did fail for me so we got this fresh one here from advanced has chrysler badging looks 
completely OEM. I mean, if somebody just gave me this pump, I wouldn't think it was the original. So, um, as you see, like I said, Gates doesn't have that. It does look like an original pump. So, we're going to pick up where we left off in my filming prior. So, I had the video done. Like I said, I'm leaving everything, taking it off and all that. Now, we're going to pick up right here with the install. So, we'll go ahead and get to the install. But before that, just a couple things I want to note. The big 15 mil leaked. Um, you can see where that kind of came down a bit and you can see it right in there. So I believe I'm going to put some RTV on that. But just one thing you want to note, there is 12 volts and these four right here have this grommet on it. I didn't put any RTV on these the first time and I had no problems with them leaking. So you see they all have the grommets. Make sure you got them pushed up on there. Okay. So these four on the outer right edge do have those rubber grommets. Just make sure you have them on there. That's how I left them. No leaking. The only thing we had leaking from um, is obviously the weep hole because it failed. And we had it right there at that 15. So I think I'm just going to put a bit of RTV around all three of these at the edge of them. Right where the washer meets the nut. And then we'll get that thing um, all squared away. So what we're going to do is go ahead and grab our new gasket. We're going to grab our pump here. And we're going to go ahead and get this thing installed. All right, guys, everything's cleaned up, ready to go. We went over all our notes, so we're going to go ahead and grab our pump and our gasket. Now, keep in mind, all of the bolts are to the side, so we know what is what. So I'm going to go one by one, and we're going to finger tight each bolt in. And from there, after everything's in and we got everything finger tight, we're going to go ahead and go through the torque sequence, torque specs, and all that. So we're going to grab the gasket, pump, get it going, finger tight, and then we'll torque everything to spec. We're going to go ahead and get this pump on. I did mention with the top three big bolts, the 213s and the 15, I'm going to put a little bit of RTV on them since the 15 did leak. So I have the 13 here. I have a little bit of the right stuff. This is great RTV. I've used it on a bunch of applications and it really never failed me. So um, definitely a good RTV. I'm just going to put a small bead right around where this washer meets up at the top of the bolt head all right so you see i just put a little bead nothing crazy i want to do that for the other two as well and then we're going to grab our gasket pump and we'll get that thing set on there all right guys new pump we got the gasket essentially just holding it on made it to the pump what i'm going to do is start with our three rtv bolts so i already have this one with the rtv on it i'm going to slide it in and then we're going to go ahead and start with that big 13 to get us going here so gonna line this thing up I'm pretty close there go ahead and get this bolt started all right now I'm gonna try to navigate this gasket and this pump underneath of this head bolt right by the thermostat but all right I got that 13 started and I'm just going to get the other two with the RTV started and then we'll start going around this entire pump and getting all these bolts in. All right, guys, I got the top three with the RTV finger tight and started. I'm just guiding in our first 10 mil now. I'm going on the opposite side. So, you know, as we know, those three big bolts are right up here. I'm going to the opposite side over here with one of our long 10 mils. And I'm just going to be finger tightening that in just to get us an even, um, you know, start with this gasket and getting these bolts screwed in. So I'm just going to go through the motions, get all these uh, 10 mils in. After I have all the 10 mils in, I'll finish off with the pulley, and then we'll go ahead and torque everything to spec. All right, guys, so all 12 of our bolts on the water pump holding it on are all finger tight. So we're going to go ahead and go through the torquing sequence now. So here is the diagram for the torquing sequence. As you can see, we got all 12 listed, one through 12. So what we're gonna do is go through each one of these. They have obviously different torque specs for the bigger ones to the smaller ones. So we're gonna start out with the small 10 mil bolts. So we're gonna get those knocked out first. Now the torque spec for those is nine foot pounds, okay? I'm actually going to be converting that to inch pounds. And with inch pounds, it's gonna be 108 inch pounds. So that's what I'm going to be torquing all of our 10 mils to in sequence. All right, guys, so we're gonna start with our first one, which is essentially dead center, okay? This one right in between the water pump pulley and the idler pulley, that is numero uno. So 
108 inch pounds. I have my torque wrench locked in. Go ahead and torque that to the nine foot pounds or 108 inch pounds. Same thing. All right, so first one is locked in, okay? So we got that one torqued to spec, and now what we're gonna do is hop to number two. And number two is directly across from number one. So this outer one right here next to the pulley, that's number two. We're gonna hop on that, and then we're just gonna continue with the sequence. All right, guys, I am on number eight. There it is, that is the last one out of the 10 mils, which is right next to this pipe. So number eight is locked in. So now we have our 13 mils, the two 13 mils, and this one included, which is the pulley, and then our 15 mils. So we're gonna go ahead and lock in our last four, and then we'll have this all torqued to spec. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and lock in our three 13 millimeter bolts. Now the torque spec for those three 13 millimeters is 18 foot pounds. I am again gonna be converting it to inch pounds because I'm gonna be using a inch pound torque wrench and it's gonna be 216 inch pounds. So either 18 foot pounds, 216 inch pounds, whatever works for you, I'm using inch pounds. So let's go ahead and get back into our torque sequence. So we're gonna pick up where we left off. So we did eight already. And now we're going to jump to nine, which is the first 13 up in the top left corner. So I'll go ahead and get that worked in. And that's 216 inch pounds. Okay, got that number nine, 13 millimeter locked in. So we're gonna to jump to number 10 which is actually the pulley so let's go ahead and get this pulley going there it is all right we got that locked in and then we got to go to our last 13 which is the one right here in the middle it's number 11 all right so we're going to lock this get this torqued in and then the last one our 15 mil will be the only one remaining all right there's that all right, guys, we're at our last bolt in the sequence, our 12th bolt, which is the center top 15 mil. So 15 mil is 41 foot pounds. So that is 41 foot pounds. I have a torque wrench here. This is foot pounds. I'm going to lock it in to 41 foot pounds. There we go, guys. It's locked in. We have all 12 now torqued to spec. Going through our torque sequence, now I would recommend going back over each one. So, you know, take your torque wrench, click on each one. So, we just did that 15. I have the 13 still on this inch pound torque wrench, and I'll just hit these real quick. Make sure, yep, that's locked in. We'll try our pulley here. Yep, good. I'll do that outer one. Yep, all right. So, they're all torque to spec. I'm gonna go back through the sequence to make sure all my tens are correct. And then we'll go ahead and move on with the install. All right, I went back over all of our bolts. So we got everything torqued to spec all through the sequence. So now we can go ahead and get this thing put back together. All right. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and do the exact opposite of removal. Everybody's favorite term. So I'm going to go ahead and start with our radiator hoses. So I'm going to go ahead and work on our lower radiator hose onto the pump so as you can see i got that on now if it doesn't go on easy you could always use a little bit of silicone spray that will help ease it on and slide any hose back on that you might be having trouble with so we got that back on and now what i'm going to do is take my uh, pliers we're going to get this back into its original clamp orientation so you'll see the marking along the hose edge of where the hose was prior and you want to seat it right in that same spot for the best potential spot at no leaks so i'm going to go ahead and get it into its oe mark right back seated where it was and then we'll move on to the next hose so that it work my way back into its original seat and i can see it some light here will always help kind of blocking my own light but yep there it is all right so we got that back seated into its original location yep feels good yep that's good so we got that one on now we can go ahead and slide our smaller upper little small heater hose there and same thing it has a marking you could see exactly where the original location of the hose clamp was we're going to get it right back to where that was okay guys i got it you can pretty much oh, i guess see where it was 
right there. You can almost feel it lock into its original location. So I felt that just fall right into place. All right, so both of these are nice and tight back where they belong and we can go ahead and continue with the reassembly. All right, so we got both of our clamps back on with the lower radiator hose and our hose going back into the water pump. So everything's good there. We're gonna go ahead and grab this aluminum line that mounts to this AC bracket here. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get these hoses back on here. So I actually put the 10 mil here in it so I didn't lose it. So I'm gonna put that to the side for a moment. And what we're gonna do is get these hoses back in and then once they're back on, we'll get this 10 mil back in. So I'm gonna slide in just as we took them off. We'll do this upper one first or this thicker one first, I should say. Yep, we can just push it right back. Take this little lower one. We're gonna start that as well. Just try to be careful with them. Don't get them all bent out of shape and all that. Work this on a little bit better. All right, so we got both of these back up to their flush line right there. So now that I have both of those reattached, I'm gonna take this mount here, just press it a little bit back into its spot. I'm gonna start that 10 mil, start that off. And I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that thing down here with this ratchet. So we're gonna go ahead and lock this 10 mil here for this aluminum coolant line here. And get that tight, nice and tight in there. Yep, that's good. Nice and secure. You don't gotta go crazy, just get it nice and tight. Now that we have both of these lines attached, this line is back in its orientation. We're gonna do the same thing with the hose clamps. I wanna move the hose clamps right back into their orientation. Just make sure you get them in their original seat so they don't actually leak and it gives it the best chance of making a good seal. So go ahead and start with the bigger one first. And see exactly where it was all right it's perfect and this one as well I can see really well where it was I'm just getting exactly where it was all right so we got those both back in their OE original location so this whole line is now installed all right, now that we got this hose connected back up, we're going to go ahead and make it easy on ourselves and get this belt back on. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get the belt back on. So here is the belt routing diagram for this 3.6. All right, so you can see everything right there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this thing started off here. I'm just going to start right around the crank. And I'm just going to get this thing routed up and we'll get that idler pulley retracted once we get to the idler pulley and we'll get that belt right over it so just working my way around going to the ac compressor and then it's coming over top here of that idler on the water pump over to the alternator so what i'm going to do if you can see i got it routed so Went over the crank, over the water pump, over the AC compressor, over the idler here. And then now it's got it over the idler there. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and move that and then we'll get that over the alternator. So I'll leave it right there. I'm going to grab my 3H drive socket wrench. All right, guys, got my 3H drive socket wrench on there. Go ahead and move that down. Should, be, should give me just enough play room there to get around all this fun stuff here. Just make sure everything is in the grooves. Last thing you want to do is fire this up and it not be in the grooves. As I'm kind of off there on the alternator. There we go. Got it now. Make sure you're even on the uh, smooth spots. Just make sure everything looks good, even. And you can, you know, see I'm moving this to give me play I need to get everything locked in and dialed in how I want it to be. So we're just about there guys yeah it looks pretty good all right so there we have it guys the belt is back on not too hard especially with all this removed so makes it a lot easier on yourself so now that we got the belt on we can go ahead and get into putting the vacuum pump back on all right belt back on so we're going to go ahead and take our vacuum pump here so remember we have to clip it back in here 
it does have to clip back around that aluminum cooling hose that we took off and then we're just going to take our two 10 mils and get it in so let's go ahead and mount this thing back to the bracket all right so we're just grabbing this thing get this clicked back onto its ac line over here get it clicked on right here get it back over the coolant line we took off and then there it is right back where it belongs take one of these bolts start it off okay got that one going i'm gonna go ahead and get the other side going here careful of the line make sure you don't bend it or do anything too crazy all right so i'm gonna go ahead get those finished off sent home with the impact and that'll be all done all right i got both of those started by hand i'm just gonna finish them off seat them home with the impact there's that one go to this other side here All right, that's good. So we got that back mounted. And the only thing we have to do with this now is plug the harness back in. So remember that the harness does clip into the bracket. So you can go ahead and plug the harness back up. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then just go ahead and get it right back into the bracket. So harness is replugged in. Both of the 10 mils are in. All of our uh, clips are back where they belong. So this is about fully reinstalled, guys. So what we got to do now is get our air intake and get that back assembled. And then we'll get into filling the cooling system up. All right, guys, now that we have everything back assembled, connected as it should be, everything we took apart to get to the pump, we can go ahead and put our air box piping assembly back on here. So dropping it in, aiming it at the throttle body. Pulling this accordion back over here. So you can see I'm just maneuvering this down. And once I get that down back right where it needs to be, it'll allow me to guide this back up and over onto the throttle body. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting this guided back on, and then we'll go ahead and get these clamps locked back in. that we're gonna lock this one in there it is all right we got both of those locked in on our air box system here so we just got to plug in our harness again and remember it had the little tab here that does go right back in to the plastic on the air box assembly so we got this all Reconnect it. Make sure you press the red tab back in so it doesn't come off. So we got all this reassembled, guys. So everything is back together. Let's get into filling the cooling system up. All right, guys. So here is the coolant. This is the original OEM Mopar 10-year uh, coolant. So this is the concentrate. Keep in mind, this is not 50-50. You do have to mix this with water. So this isn't pre-mixed, it's concentrate. You have to mix it yourself. So when you buy this, you can essentially make yourself two gallons of the antifreeze. And you know you really should only need that to do this job. You shouldn't need more than one of these. The two gallons should be more than enough. So I already mixed this. I have half to the side. I have the other half filled with water in here. So this is already mixed up for me. I mixed it, we're ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and start dumping some coolant into this thing and we'll get this back filled up. All right guys, so we are here at the overflow. Now there is numerous ways you could bleed this successfully. There's not a one size fits all. There's a couple, you know, probably three to four, maybe even five different ways you can successfully bleed the coolant system. What I'm gonna do is 100% gonna work. And I actually already did it on this video because as I mentioned, I am redoing this because of the weep hole leak on the Gates pump. So this is exactly what I did last time. This is a go-to method for me. It pretty much works every time any vehicle I've done it on. So we should have heat back virtually instantly 
once we go through these motions and get this all filled up and squared away. So we have the Mopar tenure already mixed up, half water, half concentrate. We're gonna just go ahead and start filling up our overflow. All right, so I have the funnel here in the overflow nice and tight. Got the coolant here. Now we're just gonna start dumping it into our overflow here. And it's probably gonna take about this gallon at least to start, but what we're gonna do is get it up to about the bottom level of the funnel. And when we turn this on, it's gonna suck some coolant in, and then we just have to keep it topped off after that. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this whole thing in there. It's getting pretty empty already. bubbling up. I'm gonna let it bubble for a second. Get all those air bubbles out. All right, we stop bubbling. Fill this up. All right, guys, I'm actually into my second gallon here. So you just want to keep filling until she don't fill no more. All right, guys, this is where you want to fill it to. So I got a nice tight funnel. As you can see, it's not leaking out the sides. It's pretty much airtight. And you might get some bubbling coming up, as you can see right there. Perfect timing. You'll get some of that air bubbles, you know, coming up, starting already. So look, it's almost sucking it down. So once we get to... Um, that level right there and it doesn't suck any more down. We'll go ahead and start the car So we'll go ahead and see how far this goes down. I'm gonna probably top it off one more time Since so we have this nice little uh, area of Funnel covered with fluid. We'll go ahead and start it up. All right guys So I've been letting this sit here for a few minutes. No more bubbles. You can see it's nice and flat Nothing crazy bubbling up. Everything seems to be good. We got this topped off So what we can do now is go ahead and start the vehicle and what we're not going to do yet is we're not going to put the cover on. I'm not going to put the bottom splash guard on underneath of the bumper and all that yet because we do want to check our work. We want to ensure we solve the problem. We want to make sure we have no leaks from any of the hose clamps that we um, took off and put back on, um, not from the pump itself. You know, make sure that our job was actually successful and we have no leaks. So we will, you know, obviously put on the splash guard and the engine cover when we're all said and done. We ensure this is running good with no leaks. But before we do that, we want to make sure everything is working as it should. So as you see, we got this all topped off. We're going to go ahead, start this thing up and get this thing with some hot heat and coolant level all adjusted. All right, we're going to go ahead and start this thing up now. Once you start it, it's probably going to drain this right down. You're not going to have this level anymore. Um, you probably want to have some coolant here to keep it topped off. Um, honestly, you could probably let it go. And as long as you keep um, coolant in the overflow, I bet you'll get hot heat and get this thing adjusted and it'll be bled pretty well. But if you really want to be OCD and make sure you have nothing in your system, you want to make sure this is, you know, right where it's at stays topped off. You can have somebody sitting here monitoring it. So if you have a partner, they can sit here. Make sure this level staying good and you'll see the bubbles coming up and things like that while you go and start it because immediately when this starts it's just going to suck it right down but i have the coin here just in case we're probably going to have to do a little bit more topping off put some more fluid in there so just some things to note so let's go ahead we'll get this thing started up all right guys we are in the cockpit so we're going to turn this thing on fired right up and what we want to do is turn the heat to hot so we want to get this all the way hot, pumping this hot heat, highest temperature, highest uh, vent setting as well. So let's go ahead and go to controls. Um, look at me not knowing what I'm doing. There we go, seven. And I'm gonna make sure it's as hot as it could possibly be. So it's so on high. So we got high heat all the way around, all right? so. Right now it is definitely cold. You'll probably get cold for a little bit, but once we go check this and make sure everything is good, we'll probably see that temperature. We should see that temperature start to climb up. So it's right there at the top. It's gonna suck too much down. Honestly, this is looking great. I was expecting to come out and have it pretty drained, but um, 
I think we should be okay. We probably don't even need to keep that topped off. It'll bubble itself out right here. So I'll go ahead and remove that funnel. That's right at about max where it's at. So it might be a hair higher, but as this gets warmed up and we start progressing into seeing this getting hotter, it should probably take a little bit more down in there. But um, sounds good. Pulleys are moving. Everything looks good. Our work looks good so far. Uh, we'll put some light on here in a minute. And we'll see how she's looking. All right, guys, it's been running for about five, six, seven minutes, the most. Um, heat's already kicking, guys. So, like I said, this is a, a, a fail-safe method, just about. I mean, I've never had this not work, so I wish you guys can feel it, but that is open, and it is super hot in here. So, heat's working. That's already back, and our level just dropped right down to about where it needs to be, so it never really crept too far down. And it's really just been right there. I've had no bubbles, no nothing. So you can almost let it bubble itself out before you even start it. You know what I mean? It helps get some of that air out. So, um, you know, like I said, this is exactly how I did it last time. It worked perfect. I had heat immediately. Uh, same thing again within the first five minutes. Heat's working both times. So, um, you know, there you go, guys. You can put this back on. I'm going to let it run for a little bit longer, of course, to make sure we have no leaks. But... On the note of that, you do want to make sure you check everything. So I'm looking at the two hose clamps. They're dry. I'm looking at my weep hole. So far, so good on this. I'm looking around the gasket. I don't see anything. And I do want to look at those two coolant hoses on that aluminum line that we took off right up at the top there. Dry as a bone. So everything is dry right now. But that is exactly why we left all this off. Just so we could check make sure we have no leaks but as you can see down there we got nothing leaking and the pump is looking good so far so fingers crossed we'll let it run a little longer we'll see where we're at all right guys she's been running for about 20 minutes maybe a little bit longer and uh she's looking pretty good got no drips coming from any of our clamps or any of the hoses we loosened up pump looks good weep hole looks good gasket looks good so all of our work looks good. Coolant's still at the same level. Heat is perfectly hot. Everything is bled, everything is good. Coolant level has been steady. So everything is looking great, heat's good. It looks like we're essentially done, guys. We just gotta go ahead, put our cover back on and the uh, bottom splash guard and this job is done. All right, guys, so I got the cover. Got the T30 right where it belongs. We'll go ahead and back that back out. All right, we got that out. We'll go ahead and take our splash guard here. We're gonna click this back on. Pressing it down, snapping it in place. All right, so this is nice and tight. Go ahead and finger thread our T30 back in on the cover. Lock it in with the impact. All right, that's locked in. Got the little remaining cover. Click that in, cover is on. So, the only thing left is putting the splash shield down underneath, which consists of the five 10 mils, the push clip, and it had the four 13 mils for the other plate that we put back. So, that is the only thing left to get this job completely done. So, I hope this helped with doing the water pump on your 3.6 fourth gen Jeep Grand Cherokee. Make sure you stay tuned because you never know when I might be wrenching on this thing again. And until next time, guys.